From Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. Uh, This is Hillary Fuchs, CPA. You left word for me to call Mr. Dollar. I don't seem to recall the name. I'm with Universal Adjusters. They asked me to look into this Wendover claim. Universal Adjusters? Insurance Adjusters? That's right, insurance. I understand you filed a claim in Mrs. Wendover's name. Mrs. Wendover hired me to handle her affairs a few days ago. Who do you want to talk to, me or Mrs. Wendover? Anybody who can make me understand why Mrs. Wendover let a $50,000 policy lie around for two years before she filed a claim. I'll try. I don't know whether I can convince you or not, but I'll try. Tonight, and every weekday night, Bob Bailey and the transcribed adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to the Universal Adjustment Bureau, 518 Spear Boulevard, Hartford, Connecticut. The following is an accounting of expenditures during my investigation of the Tears of Night matter. Expense account item one, $92.50, airfare and incidentals, Hartford to Miami Beach, Florida. My plane got in at 11 p.m., so I went to a hotel and got some sleep. I put in a call to Hillary Fuchs, certified public accountant, as soon as I woke up. Then I had some breakfast and took a cab out to his office. It was a pleasant four-mile trip along a beautiful white-sanded oceanfront, and it cost me, item two, three bucks even. Come on in here, Dollar. The air conditioner's working here. Hillary Fuchs was a big man in his late 40s. He was semi-bald, had a good sunburn, and smelled faintly of scotch whiskey. The office he led me into was cool and dark and elegantly furnished in bamboo knickknacks. The desk was cluttered with a stack of financial statements and legal papers. This is quite a thing, I guess, Dollar. By the way, I didn't find any universal insurance adjusters in the phone book. We're located in Hartford, Connecticut. Hartford? You're a long way from home, Dollar. They sent you all the way to Miami Beach about this? Yep. Seems like a pretty expensive way to handle it. Pretty expensive claim, $50,000. Would it do any good to tell you it's legitimate? Sure, but I'm hired to check it out just the same. (laughs) In other words, you don't believe me. Well, look at it our way, Mr. Fuchs. The claim came into the office day before yesterday, and we have 72 hours to act on it. Okay. What can I do? First off, tell me your connection with Mrs. Wendover. She hired me to put her business affairs in order about 10 days ago, first time I ever saw her. She said the Treasury Department had advised her to get some expert help. They were on her about back taxes, and that's it. Uh Oh, I see. Tell me about Noah Wendover's death. He died two years ago, last April 14th. By the way, it's just coming to me... Did you people, I mean, did the insurance company know anything about him being dead until that claim came in? No. Nope. No wonder they sent you all the way from Hartford. Well, uh, Wendover and his wife took a party of eight out on their boat for a ten-day cruise. Wendover had an attack of appendicitis at sea. There wasn't a doctor aboard. The appendix burst, and he died before they could make the nearest port. Mm-hmm. Let me get back to the original question. Why all this time before Mrs. Wendover filed claim for benefits? Well, you really got to know Mrs. Wendover, I guess. She's a little crazy, a little wacky, a little strange. These are your impressions of her? It's a consensus. I asked around after she came here the other day. The story is that she and Wendover had a pretty good thing in their marriage. They were wild about each other. They spent money like water, and they had plenty of it to spend. Then one day he died. Kind of threw her. Maybe it's still throwing her. I don't know. Sure, sure. Somewhere along the line, in the last year, Mrs. Wendover's met somebody else. I don't know who he is because I wasn't paying any attention when she mentioned his name. But she's sort of coming out of it and she's going to marry him. Uh So she wants to get her business affairs in order. From the look of things, nobody's done much about them since Wendover's death. You see all that stuff on the desk? Yeah, I noticed it. It's all hers. She brought it to me in three big hat boxes. Stocks, bonds, bills, deeds, I don't know what all. I know she's in a little trouble with the government, not because she hasn't got the money to pay them, but just because she hasn't bothered with anything like that. Anyhow, one of the first things I came across was the insurance policy thrown in there with all the rest of the stuff. And look, you see these checks? Yeah. Almost $90,000, dividends on some oil stock. Doesn't even bother to open her mail or cash her checks. (laughs) Well... A lot of people around the country, including your insurance company, are going to be startled when I finish straightening all this out. I sent the policy claim in as a matter of course. That's 
my explanation for it being two years late. <laughs> well, that's a pretty good explanation. Look here. She completely forgot she loaned an $8,000 automobile to a friend in Tampa 14 months ago. I asked her about it, and she said she thought she'd left it at the filling station. What? And here, the boat went over Dydon, worth $60,000. She sold it to a fisherman last year for $5,000. Yeah, I get the idea, Mr. Fuchs. Yeah. So you filed the insurance claim in her name along with a dozen other matters that should have been taken care of two years ago. Yeah. You play golf? No. Well, I do, and I'm tired of looking at this pile of stuff. Mind if I look at it? Help yourself. All yours. I'll be at the club. Do whatever you have to. By the way, what do you have to do? Verify this death certificate in the coroner's report. Well, then you'll honor the claim? I'll file my report, and it's up to the insurance company to do as they see fit. You're kind of cagey, aren't you? Uh, that's why they pay me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, Mr. Fuchs. Yeah? Is there some kind of bank balance in this stuff, current? Oh, you'll find it there, but I'll tell you, in cash, Mrs. Wendover's worth about $950,000. I doubt very much if she's trying to cheat the insurance company out of $50,000. You can't ever tell, though, can you, Mr. Fuchs? Nope, can't ever tell. After he left, I got on the telephone and talked to officials about the coroner's autopsy and the death certification on Noah Wendover. They all seem to be in order. Then I went through the papers on Fuchs' desk. They seem to be in enough disorder to verify what he told me about Elise Wendover. I left Fuchs' office about 4.30 and went back to my hotel, carrying a picture of a woman who had existed in a state of limbo for two years or more, so far as responsibility and attention to business went. Johnny Dollar. Uh, Hillary Fuchs, can you come over to my office right away? I just left there. What's up? Mrs. Wendover, she's having a fit. Come on over. Expense account item three. Three more bucks, more cab fare, back to Hillary Fuchs' office. I pulled up in front at exactly 5.30 and noticed a 1956 white Cadillac convertible parked in front. For no reason at all, I took 30 seconds to peek inside. The registration told me the car belonged to Elise Blair Wendover. She had left her purse on the seat and the keys in the ignition. A mink stole was thrown carelessly over the back of the seat. Anybody could have taken the stole, the purse, the car, the whole works. Mrs. Wendover was living up to her advance notices. Come in, come in. Fuchs looked pale and shaken. He fumbled around for a cigarette until I handed him one of mine. He lit it up and tried to get a grip on himself. Mrs. Wendover's in there. Well, what happened? Well, I had some papers for her to sign, and she dropped in a little while ago. Uh -huh. I told her about you. I, I explained to her it was certainly reasonable the insurance company would want to investigate a claim that had been delayed 25 months. Well? She blew up, got kind of hysterical about it, said she wanted to see you right away, that she had something to tell you. Go easy on her, will you? Well, why do you say that? Oh, it's just that... Well, if I'm wrong about her, I'm glad, but I don't think I'm wrong when I say she's right on the edge, just on the edge of it. Feeling better, Mrs. Wendover? The pale girl with the coal black hair, seated stiffly in the chair in front of Hillary Fuchs' desk, was not feeling better. She could have been 16 or 36. It depended on where you were standing when you looked at her. She had a mouth that was too full, shoulders too wide for the strapless sundress, a pair of sandals, a clanking costume bracelet, and black eyes, round, big, bright, too bright. This is Mr. Dollar, Mrs. Wendover. I understand you're investigating my husband's death. I'm here to verify the facts so that eastern states can act on your claim. Don't you believe he's dead? Yes. Don't you? Oh, yes. I saw him die. Yes, he's dead. How much money do you owe me? The claim is for $50,000. Will you pay it? Well, I, I presume it will be paid from all I've seen so far. Of course, that part of it's up to the insurance company. Of course. And they have men sitting at desks reading reports about claims all day long. Ah, uh, yes. My dad owned an insurance company once, you know. Those men sitting at their desks, even my dad sat at a desk. I wonder something. Would one of those men sitting at one of those desks write, okay, on my claim for Noah's benefits if he knew about me? Uh, sit down, Mrs. Wendover. Maybe you'd like a drink. You have one, Mr. Fuchs, would they? Well, I, I have to be indefinite about that, too, Mrs. Wendover. 
What would put a question in the mind of an adjuster if he knew about you? I'm indolent, and I'm irresponsible. Mr. Fuchs can tell you that. I'm not quite dependable, am I, Mr. Fuchs? Oh, we're getting straightened out, Mrs. Wendover. And then, of course, that wouldn't make a difference. I mean, not really. A great many irresponsible, indolent, undependable people file claims. There's something else. I'm a curse. Are you? Oh, yes. It's a very bad thing, a curse. People around me, people I love, just seem to die. Why do you think you're a curse? Noah died, and I loved him. And Daddy, I loved him. And my brother Jim, all dead. No one can stay alive around me. I thought I should tell you that. Yeah, well, I appreciate it, Mrs. Wendover. Well... And we don't have anything more to discuss. Goodbye, Mr. Dollar, Mr. Fuchs. Oh, wait a minute. Uh, Johnny, hey, where are you going? I'm going to drive her home. You're right. She's on the edge of something. I can't quite figure it yet. Brother was killed in Korea. Her father died of a heart attack ten years ago. I got that much from the papers on your desk. Lord, where'd she ever get the idea? Oh, I don't know. I've heard of things like this happening. I'll phone you later. Right. Wait a minute. I'll drive you home, Mrs. Wendover. Oh, that'll be nice. She smiled brightly, still too brightly, and we drove along. She didn't tell me which way to turn, what direction to go, and I didn't ask her. I liked it that way, no one saying a word. I was listening to something else anyhow, something inside of me, loud like a cannon firing twice a second. It was my heart making all the noise. Oh, it's happened a couple of times before, and it meant trouble coming up. I knew it. My heart never makes a mistake. Mr. Dollar, do you think he'll die too? Now here's our star to tell you about tomorrow's intriguing episode of this week's story. Tomorrow... Right out in the broad daylight, I have a look at the tears of night. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, is transcribed in Hollywood. Written by John Dawson, it is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone. Be sure and join us tomorrow night, same time and station, for the next exciting episode of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar, Roy Rowan speaking.